Welcome to Beta Impressions for the Settlers. The Settlers is a reboot of the Settlers franchise and it's a PC exclusive game. And well, if I go and put the genre on it, it's an RTS. It's a real time strategy game. It has a different style of uh, how you're gonna build up the economy in the game and how you're gonna manage it. But it feels like an RTS game. And this is similar to how the Settlers 5 was uh, created. And that was not very well received by the Settlers fans. So you be warned about that. It's still, I'm gonna show it to you, it still kind of feels uh, like a good game, but you're not gonna find it to be the same way as let's say Settlers 1, 2, 3, and 4 were. Or for that sake, um, 6 or 7. So let's uh, jump into the visuals first. As you can see, there's a certain type of watercolor uh, theme to the whole game here it looks very nice i really like this theme when it comes to settings visually there's going to be quite a few settings there available well not quite a few there's not that many but hopefully maybe they'll increase the number of stuff you can tweak overall i cannot change anything right now that's uh, available here this is what we already preset for me so with all that it runs at 75 uh, fps right now based on my hardware which is not the latest hardware but you can see it in the description so overall it runs very well and it's you know for a strategy game it needs it uh, it doesn't really need to have a high-end graphics or so on because um, you're gonna be looking at uh, stuff things from the far away so there are some problems with the actual visuals and I will talk and I'll talk about that when as soon as I load the game in. Let's uh, start in with what was available in terms of uh, the closed beta and what I could uh, look at. Well, you can see this club is going to be a shop. Not sure what that's going to be including, but that's not available. It's loadout, not sure what that is. That's not available. And there's a campaign. Now, the marketing materials say that the campaign is about uh, people who are shipwrecked and they, I guess, trying to build up their society back up or something along those lines. It's very reminiscent of Settlers 2 campaign, I guess, uh, right now, at least that's how it sounds. I can't play it, there was nothing here. There are tutorial available, out of the three missions out of five available in the tutorial. Now, interesting enough, the tutorial, when I was going through it, was, seems to be forcing me to do things way more hands-on than they are actually in the game, because when I was playing in the skirmish mode, things were not the same way. In the skirmish mode, we have 1 versus 1, 2 versus 2, and 4 versus 4, which is not available in beta. Now, it's possible to play PvP, but I never did that because never got around to time to master enough anything to really be confident enough to go online and play against other players. So I play the casual, because casual allows me to play against the artificial intelligence as a, as a computer opponent, right? So that's good. There's onslaught mode, but doesn't tell me exactly what that is, so I haven't uh, been able to try it out. So just... Let's go one versus one for the casual and here we have um, ability to pick races there's going to be three races in the game Ilari, Maru and Jorn the issue is that uh, we only have two available in the closed beta I only tried Ilari again I didn't have the time I'm going to get into the reason why I keep saying I did not have the time so what my problem was this well when uh, the beta came out, uh, Ubisoft put out a uh, type of a post on Facebook for the settlers saying, like, which race will you pick, Larry, Maru, or Jordan? Well, that uh, you know, seems to be an interesting uh, question because Jordan is not available to be picked in the closed beta. Alright, so let's go into the actual game. I'm going to play as a Larry. And I'm going to show you how just the actual game goes through. And we're going to talk about some things uh, in the game's issues and stuff I, am, I had and now it's gonna tell me welcome, welcome to, the shire. to the shire not sure why is their announcer but it feels like to be an extra but fine maybe they trying to there's gonna be different maps so far I always land on the shire map um, maybe that's because it's a beta so here there's again visually Looks pretty good, the war color look, the buildings look really nice, I like the designs uh, from all the marketing materials so far, I really like the how everything is done. There's the ability to zoom in, although as usual I don't really see a reason to zoom in in a strategy game, you always want to be zoomed out as much as possible. So here's our military units we have here, so I'm going to send them over here. I can select them directly, this is reminiscent of... Uh, People will see this as something that was possible to do starting Settlers 3. You can do that in Settlers 3, 4, 5, and 6. You can select military units, move them around. So, one of the issues with visuals here is that it's hard to tell the military units apart. 
Looking from here, can you tell the difference? There's three different military units there. Well, yeah, the, some of them carry shields, but uh, there's also supposed to be crossbowmen and guys with axes. Yeah, can you guys tell them apart? Well, if I zoom in, I can. I guess I can start telling them apart, but uh, I'm not going to be playing zoomed in, right? I'm going to try to zoom out as far as possible to see the more of the actual field that I'm going to be playing on. And um, not that easy to tell them apart. That's a bit of a problem for me. Uh, the other units, here's the engineers, which do most of the construction. They do. They also allow you to claim territory, find minerals, and pick up some... Uh, Special things that are lying around on the map. So I'm gonna grab uh, two of them actually right now. I'm gonna send them to claim territory here. I'm gonna need that. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and build a logging camp. I'm gonna put it here. And true to the settlers' fashion, as soon as I start building things, you see the other workers be go automatically and they start. Uh, Delivering products to the logging camp, or you're gonna have here the engineers themselves that will arrive and start building things. They're gonna start building roads, which are necessary in order to have the deliveries of products from the construction, not construction sites, from manufacturing sites to the warehouse, this building in the center. And from here, the stuff gets delivered to other places which I will process those products. So, besides logging camp, which will produce logs, I also need to build a sawmill which will produce planks, which actually are used for construction, right here. So, that's, that's some of the buildings, then I'm also going to build some of uh, the quarry here. Now, with the, uh, as you can see, there's a certain territory that I marked out, and I always said that I've sent them, like, my engineers to claim new territory. Well, other way to expand the territory is to just build buildings on the very edge. The In that case, you're going to have a uh, territory is being expanded automatically but it's not gonna expand that far finally there's also something like called the residences that I built the benefit of the residence is that this gives me additional settlers who will act as first they're gonna be just carrying things around but eventually they also as I build buildings they'll start working in those buildings and as I build military units those settlers will become the new military units Oh, yeah, I can also make them into engineers by building a guild hold here. Right there, I'm going to place the guild hold here. Let's put a road to it. And I can uh, train those units to be at the average, the regular settlers basically to become the engineers. So far, things work very much automatically as I expected in terms of a uh, settlers game. The issue would be is that at some point I did find that eventually the engineers stop going and doing things automatically. Not sure why. Sometimes you, I would see I would have construction sites uh, where things need to be produced, uh, constructed. Uh, goods, uh, the construction materials have been delivered there, but the engineers are just standing and not doing anything. So I'm not sure why that happens, but it does happen. And uh, you can select the engineers and direct them to go to work to certain, a certain areas to construct certain things to build certain roads if you want to that, that, that's totally possible let's me let me see if i can find some extra engineers uh in order, we need to start expanding territory to here to because right now we're cutting down trees that will not regrow as you can see if i'm looking at oh it says forest but it says those show me that's not gonna regrow but this forest will regrow interesting part about this game is that unlike previous settlers games where there was a a worker that will replant the trees we don't have one here all right uh, is there any extra engineers well there's a guild hole so i'm just gonna build 10 more that i can i can like, produce here all right for that i need uh, tools and uh, now that i now i run out of the tools So, all right, so now we have some engineers here. What I'll do, I'll select three of them and we'll send them to go ahead and claim this territory for me. I need to expand and then let's grab three more engineers and tell them to claim territory here.
So it tells me that all residences are inhabited. That means I should build up more residences. So yeah, let's do that. That's not that's a good idea. Interesting thing about residences, if I deal build them close to each other, there's a bonus for that. Uh, an extra person will be produced. So as we extracting these things and we claiming more territory, I should also slowly I should get a few more engineers somewhere. But there it is, uh new ones are being produced. So let's uh, claim territory and do that here. Eventually I can also upgrade the roads. The, the workers will move faster on those roads. There's also ability to give them donkeys so they'll transport more. Uh, what else I need to mention about the roads is that the workers will work uh, will walk or across the rough terrain. And if, let's say, if your road system is not efficient, they will actually take a shorter route over the rough terrain. Oh, I got an enemy. Come in, uh, except my military units are not at key to one. And my engineers are easily killed, so I should move here. There's nothing I can't carry. And I lost two. One thing is that uh, you, I found that is that uh, engineers are pretty quickly die Let's off. I'll be very careful about protecting them. Usually, AI is not that aggressive, at least it's. Second time that I'm actually finding that AI is taking more initiative than usual. Before they used to be used to not be aggressive and allowed me to expand and build up pretty slowly. Something that I found to be a bit of a problem because, like I mentioned, the game goes slowly. And what I should have actually showed you as as soon as I loaded the game, I'm building farms right now. But what I should have showed you as I loaded the game is the fact that if I go into the menu, I don't see a save function. Anywhere. Sorry. So that means uh, I couldn't really go and save the game and can keep on playing it later on, even though I'm playing against a, a computer opponent. It's not like I'm, play, I'm saving a multiplayer game. But that's n it, there's no ability for me to save the game, and it's annoying because uh, if you don't have time to sit here for hours and try, try to play this game, well. You're not going to have time to play it. You're not going to be able to finish it, uh, so on. Right? You need to... And not everybody has the time to dedicate so much... Or has the ability to dedicate so much time into playing a certain game. The other people have other priorities. And that means the a certain amount of uh, people... A certain uh, crowd of people is not going to be playing this game. Because they're going to say, well... I want to play it, but I don't have the time to play it for hours, right? If you're talking about not something like it's you have to play for half an hour in order to win the same match, or no, we, I went for about like I think uh, more than an hour in this morning trying to make sure that I can build up enough military to start to take out the enemy, and it took me about an hour and a half or something to get to that point, and so I, and I just began to attack. Maybe I'm just being slow, but then. Uh, I don't see any way to really speed up things, right? Um, I'm trying to expand as much as possible in order for me... Okay, I'm gonna tell these guys to stop. Uh, in order for me to find new resources, I actually have to send the units to survey that, but this is the area like here. If I click here, it will tell me it's you know, possible to find resources here, it's here, and so on. But for me to do that, I need to claim this area first. So I send already engineers to claim things and I have the other engineers uh, being employed in construction right now they're not but as I'm talking I'm not focusing on on, on building but uh, generally they would be employed in construction so how how can I do it faster at least I'm not sure maybe I'm just being slow but uh, I you know, I try to go as fast as I could but that is really not work out now the game gives me pretty good information about production here. So you see, it tells me that there's not enough products here being provided. So flour from the windmill is not coming in. If the windmill is not producing flour because there's not enough uh, wheat coming to the windmill, so I should build up more farms. This way, it will allow me to increase the wheat production and get more flour going in to the windmill. There we go. Also, I have ability to speed up production. Here it is. I have a situation here where it shows me that if I 
start sending food to these uh, places. They'll speed up production. They'll work twice as fast. So what to do? So I need to send in fish, and here will, the fish will come from there. Same thing I can do with the quarries. Uh, different um, production sites require different foods. Um, in order for settlers to be produced by the residences, I do require to pro wait for them. So it also gives you how much time left till the next settler arrives. Uh, or in order to speed this up, I can send bread here. That's the reason to produce farms. And to build up a windmill and bakery. Now when it comes to economic management, uh, <clears throat> the the economic chains here are not as complex as the, let's say as we would have found them in to be in settlers uh, one, two, three, four. Here it's a bit more simpler and straightforward. While we do have some different type of products here in in goods, um, there's three different weapons: uh, swords, uh, axes, and bows. So in order for me to build new units, I need to actually start producing them. There's also tools for the engineers. Generally, the production process seems to be a bit more streamlined. At least that is how it felt to me. There's not that many intermediate steps. Okay. Ooh. You guys got very close. Uh, I should, to the enemy, I should not have been doing that. I'll tell them to go claim this area in the meantime. Camp. And I'm going to produce... Uh, well, I'm going to build, actually. Logging camp here. I'm going to put up a military building for defense. Have the two different towers. One, one is called Bastion. That called the tower. Bastion heals your units that just stand nearby. You have a area effect of a heal available. Tower has an area effect uh, attack against the enemies. That's possible to you be used against. Uh, well, if you have a lot of enemies coming out, the towers it's possible to destroy them this way. Very convenient. I use it to defend myself a few few times when uh, you don't have your military units nearby to help out in defense. So. Let's see what else we can uh, can build to show you things. Um, well, let's uh, show you the military building. So here we have uh, some a building called the training ground. So this is a military building that allows me to train new military units. Put up here. To build up a road to it. And there's also another one that allows me to research. Uh, things that will eventually allow me to upgrade military units well they upgrade automatically the military units so um, that's gonna be it's called academy i gonna build it here and the uh, yeah, is actually taking more of a uh, initiative than usual here Straight out attack here we have uh, our units attacking i'm not sure if there's uh, some kind of a uh, rock paper scissors type of approach to combat I haven't figured that out again because I haven't had a chance to play it uh, long enough because, well, I didn't get to save the game, so I couldn't do that. Now, besides um, farms and so on, I do have other buildings that I can uh, build. Here we're getting close to the area where we have some deer, so that means I can build a hunter's cabin. Which will, start pro which will produce meat for me. And meat will be required for different uh, other. Uh, they, uh, I believe mines require meat. So once I have the mines, well, eventually once we claim this area, but then we'll survey it and we'll be able to build mines. I'm going to build a road here. The other way to get uh, meat is to build ranches. So then I'm going to put down, put down a few ranches here. Also, because um, I'm stretching my supply lines already from, from the warehouses here, but I'm already building some stuff here. It makes sense for me to uh, allow, to build up uh, another warehouse. I'm going to put that warehouse down here. And I'm going to build a road towards it. And a road around it. A uh, road around it is really needed because... Units, uh, the settlers don't travel through the warehouse. So let's uh, I'm gonna build a few more residences Enemy here. Reason is that we're gonna need um, 
more people. Since uh, settlers, uh, the ones that are regular settlers that carry stuff around, they are the ones who go and work in different um, buildings. They, they'll, they'll populate those buildings. Let's uh, boost this building actually. They'll populate those buildings. They also become the engineers. They also become the military units, right? So I see my population here, 94 out of 94. So therefore, that means all the residences are taken up and therefore I can build more uh, residences and I should build more actually in order to increase the population. One thing that I found a bit uh, problematic for me is that I can't control the queue here. Well, yeah, I can uh, send my units around, let's say, like I can tell the engineers to go and uh, construct this or that uh, location, uh, that, this, that location, right? Say, I want them to go build this road, they'll go off, <clears throat> they'll go off and try to build that road. And, uh, but I cannot stop or redirect the delivery of supplies to different locations. In the previous games, there was a way to control the queues and so on. Like as in Settler 7, you could control which building you want to have built, is Especially if you find yourself in a pinch that you need a certain building to be built faster or so on. You want that building to be built, well, you can't here because there's no way to do so. Now the game is telling me here is that uh, storage is full and they cannot, that means the building is not going to produce until the goods are picked up and delivered back to their house. And that's the reason for it is because I don't have enough uh, settlers walking, walking around and delivering stuff, so hopefully... We gonna get that. Here's a military building. We can produce these three different uh, units. And as soon as I build up the academy, I will be able to show you that how to, I can upgrade the buildings. And here it is. I'm looking here. It tell me that I got all the products that I need for construction, and I also got all the engineers I need for construction here. Even if I don't get all the five here, it was one that still be constructing stuff. I found that, but it's just gonna be slower. This all these guys are done do? with uh, whatever they've been doing. So let's grab them, and I'm going to find another engineer. What's up? And let's do three so that they'll work faster. And we're going to claim this area. That's where we know the resources are there. So while well, these guys are still constructing here. So let's see if I can also build up another ranch. Have enough space. I can just build it up this way. There's not enough space that way, but still. Alright, so there you go. There's our academy, and here, in exchange for gold, uh, the envoys asked me to wait right here. My engineers are uh, being killed off, so I'm going to send in military here to clean up the area. But here's our academy, and here I can. Our army is under attack. I can build up. Uh, And special tensions is being really annoying this time around. Like I said, they're being way more it's being way more active than usual. Usually they a bit uh, sits, it sits there, does nothing, and I kinda understood to be the artifact of the actual game. In terms of that uh, they wanted people to be able to learn the game without being threatened by artificial uh, intelligence. So I'm not sure if uh, why at this time around it's actually being way more proactive. And attacking me. Uh, one way to boost up uh, delivery of products is to build up better roads. So I'm gonna make a gravel road here. There we go. So back to the academy before we were rudely interrupted. Here it is. I can upgrade different military units, including engineers, in exchange for gold. The engineers are actually upgrading exchange for. So, I guess that's all there is to show about the game, and uh, I wish I could have jumped further and show you a few more things, but I couldn't because there's no save function, I couldn't save the game, and uh, I just don't want to kind of create multiple videos I them together f for this uh, situation. Because I, I think I want to emphasize the fact that there is no save function in this game, which is annoying. I could never really finish uh, this map or play it out completely because... I think I tried to go as far as I see I could before I, you know, where I could build up enough of my military strength to go ahead and attack the enemy, 
and I found myself playing past uh, one hour, I think like at an hour and a half, if before I was had enough military to start attacking the enemy. So to me, that's kind of a... Well, it's a big uh, minus right now, unless they can uh, somehow fix it uh, and uh, allow us to save the game or how to start the game, especially if I'm playing against artificial intelligence. Or maybe Ubisoft wants to this to be a multiplayer focused game, where we are playing always against the multiplayer. It also would be annoying if the campaign is not going to have the same function inside, right? If the missions are going to be long, again, not everybody's going to have time to play hours and hours on end for in the game. So, without the same function, that seems to be kind of a weird choice. Economy-wise, uh, I said it's a bit seems to be simplified. Uh, things is a bit more straightforward, but maybe that's because uh, Ubisoft already has a uh, heavy economy-based game, which is called uh, well, it's Anno. So yeah, whole Anno series is now that. And um, my understanding is maybe that Ubisoft doesn't want to cannibalize the player base there. People who want that heavy economic management will play Anno, and here is a game that's not that heavy. Well, wherever where they you know they decide to work on that's fine for them. For me, it looks like a good game. In a lot of ways, you know, it's fine. It looks for, it looks fine. I really like actually the I mentioned that before already, but I I like the art style of the game. There's nothing really here to show me that the game would to say that it would be a cool game, but it's a good game. It's uh, at the same time there's nothing in the game to really grab me and say yeah I really want to play this. Maybe the campaign would be interesting enough to play, but not sure. We don't have a campaign available to us. Alright, well, we that's... Uh, gonna jump out from here. That's all uh, I have to say about the game. Like this video, please like it. If you didn't like it, don't like it, then please follow and subscribe.